Relays, we're covering today's top boxing news. Same with me and Raven. I think on paper she's she's ranked above me in the British rankings and even the world rankings. In my head, I think that's ridiculous because I believe I'm better than Raven Chapman. But to people that haven't followed me in the amateurs and only really watch pro boxing, they might think I'm levels below Raven Chapman or I'm not ready to fight Raven Chapman, which is absolute, like, <laughs> like, I'd be more than happy to fight Raven this week and I believe I'd get the win. Well, I understand Karis's desire to prove herself in the pro ranks and her desire to do so by fighting Raven Chapman. Ultimately, you can't base professional rank standings based on beliefs. You can't base professional rank standings based on amateur ranks and whatever happened in the amateurs years ago. The fight that Karis is referencing, the fight that she had in the amateurs with Raven Chapman, that was years ago. If Raven is now further along she is. than Karis is, it's because Raven's been a professional a while longer than Karis has. Uh. Raven debuted as a professional in 2021. Karis debuted as a professional in 2022, the following year. When you survey their quality of competition, so far, who's been fighting better fighters? Raven Chapman, by and large, has fought better and more experienced fighters than Karis has. Raven fought a former champion in Jorgelina Guanini, a seasoned journeywoman in Linda Leica, and more recently she was in action opposite the ring an unbeaten up-and-comer like herself in Brazil's own Lila Furtado. And she's set to see action at least one more time before this year is out. So if Raven is ahead of Karis in the ranks, that would be the why, that would be the reason as far as a fight between them. Trainer and manager extraordinaire Steffi Bull caught wind of Karis Audingstall's comments and in so many words he says, great fight, Ben, Ben Shalom, he's got my number. The thing I've grown to love about the British boxing scene as opposed to the American one is that they are a bit quicker to the draw. They're quicker to put their unbeaten up and comers in there against each other to prove who's the better fighter between them. They're quicker to do that than the Americans are. Here in America, if you have a good blue chip prospect, the promoters are likelier to build a cocoon around them so that they can develop on their own time, on their own schedule, as opposed to putting them out there against another good unbeaten up and comer to see how good they really are. This happens more often in the UK boxing scene than the American one. Think Anthony Joshua versus Dillian White. Think Felix Cash versus Denzel Bentley. This past weekend's fight at heavyweight between Fabio Wardley and David Adelaide. Daniel Dubois versus Joe Joyce. Just those kinds of fights that feature unbeaten up and comers. The Brits are a lot quicker, a lot more willing to roll the dice when it comes to their unbeaten up and comers, their blue chip prospects, than the Americans are. Perhaps that's a part of the reason that their scene is more fertile. Their boxing scene is a lot more vibrant right now than the American boxing scene is. Thus, a fight like this between two unbeaten up and comers, two really good ones, it is viable. It could happen. But Ben, he does have to sweeten the deal. He does have to sweeten the pot. He does have to make it worth Raven Chapman's while because Raven doesn't box under the boxer banner. She doesn't box on Sky. She boxes on Queensbury and BT. So there still are network and promotional politics that you have to think about. It can happen. The fight can definitely happen. But what is Ben Shalom willing to pay to make it happen? What you want Raven to do is to fight your fighter on your side of things as the away fighter, conceding that advantage. Well, if you want her to make that concession, you've got to pay to play. There's no two ways about it. It's not like Karis has something that Raven needs. Raven's actually further along. Thus, you've got to pay to play. I think it's smart of Karis to focus on the domestic scene, the domestic picture first, before she goes worrying about world titles and the world title picture, i.e. calling out an Amanda Serrano or anybody like that, like we see what Sky Nicholson is doing. It's not for no reason. Focusing on the domestic scene first, the local fighters in your area, your neck of the woods, that allows you to properly develop and amass a following over time. So by the time you're fighting for a world title, you've amassed some marquee value, some notoriety, as opposed to jumping the gun. Calling out the big fish, the established names at the weight, 
straight away. A fight between Karis and Raven could happen in the coming year. It could happen as soon as next year. But once again, Ben Shalom has got to make it worth Raven's while. What's in it for Raven? That's the question. In men's super lightweight news, it appears that Roly Romero has been demoted to a champion in recess. Per the WBA's latest set of rank standings, the world title, the WBA title, is registered as vacant. Roly Romero, as a result of his injury, quote unquote injury, I have no doubts, has been labeled a champion in recess. And the division, the division itself, is better for it because, let's be honest, Roly wasn't going to unify with anybody. He wasn't going to unify titles with Subriel Matias or the winner of Haney versus Pro Gray. Tiafima Lopez. Roly wasn't going to unify that title. He wasn't going to do anything with it but hold it hostage and defend it at his own discretion. That's what he was going to do. On the face of it, you say that the reason the WBA demoted him is because he's quote unquote injured. But underneath it all, we know he's not. Underneath it all, what it really is, is that he doesn't want to have to fight O'Hara Davies and his handlers are not confident enough in him and his boxing ability to allow that fight to happen because this guy barely made it past Ishmael Barroso, who O'Hara Davies is going to be fighting on the undercard of Ryan Garcia's next fight with Oscar Duarte. It hurts the division and it hurts the sport when anyone has the audacity, any promoter, any broadcaster has the nerve to try to sell you Roly Romero as a capable boxer, let alone a world champion. No, it doesn't just hurt the 140 pound division. It hurts the validity of the sport. How is it a sport when you're pretending that this guy is a good boxer, that this guy is a world champion of any kind? Only at the PBC and Showtime could Roly Romero have finagled a situation like this because at top rank, they would have fed him to the wolves and at match room, he still would have got exposed. At golden boy. He would have got found out. You don't want to waste your audience's time and your broadcast partner's money pretending that this guy is a good fighter or a champion of any kind. What's the point? It's these kinds of shameless marketing strategies that now see Showtime leaving the sport of boxing. But neither you trying to sell me this guy. What were you thinking? There's a lot of talk about the state of boxing right now. The American boxing scene and Tyson Fury's lackluster performance this past weekend against an MMA fighter, what it would take to give the sport a shot in the arm, restore it back to its old glory. And it's stuff like this, it's stuff like this that needs to happen. Separating the contenders from the pretenders. And that's what Roly Romero is, a pretender, a retard who's good for a decent soundbite every so often. Understand that when you do a fight, it costs money. You're wasting your broadcast partner's money, wasting the audience's time, pretending that this guy belongs on television. You know, as soon as the people at top rank identified Edgar Berlanga as a bit of a pretender, a guy who really doesn't want the tough fights, he doesn't really want to step up in class, as soon as they identified that, they cut him loose. They let him go. Let him be somebody else's problem. Let somebody else pay for his fights. I'm gonna waste any more time or money on this guy. And when you look at Roly Romero, look at this schmuck. It's a wonder he even got this far, that they actually got this guy to a world title, that he was a world champion, even if it was just for a few seconds, is ridiculous. And it says a lot about the state of American boxing that any broadcaster or any promoter would try to sell you this piece of crap. Not for that guy. What happens now? If O'Hara Davies takes care of business with Ishmael Barroso, becomes WBA champion, I expect to see him fight Ryan Garcia early next year. That's if Ryan holds up his end of the bargain and takes care of business with Oscar Duarte. If he does that, he will probably take on O'Hara Davies afterwards. And if he takes care of business with O'Hara, O'Hara Davies, becomes WBA champion, I then expect him to have a unification match, a big pay-per-view with Tiafima Lopez. No, that there have been preliminary conversations about such a fight this year 
for next year. Both Bob Arum and Oscar De La Hoya seem receptive to the fight. The fighters seem receptive to the fight. And it can happen for the American boxing scene. It needs to, without delay. They need to bring back the big fights, the high stakes fights, because that's what people pay to see. They pay to see you take a risk, not to play it safe. Can't wait till every blue moon, every leap year, to put on a high stakes fight. It needs to happen, and it needs to happen more often. Next year it might. A major broadcaster like Showtime leaving the sport might be the wake-up call to the rest of the promotional outfits out there that they need to do better, need to get it together. Finally, former champion George Groves stated, I don't think it's Usyk next for Fury. It's either Nganu or that's the last of Fury. Immediately after the fight, George Groves said in so many words, that he's not convinced that fight is going to go through in December, and by now we all know it's not going to, but George, George stated, there is not a chance that the Usyk fight is happening on that day, Groves told Sky Sports on Wednesday. It is not Usyk on December 23rd. I don't think it's Usyk next. I think it's either Nganu or that's the last of Fury. He tells everyone he is the Gypsy King, that he is the man. No fighter can ever beat him. There is someone right now who can beat him, and that's Usyk. A lot of people will think the same. He doesn't need to roll the dice and get beat by the little gap-toothed Ukrainian guy. I happen to agree, at least a little bit. The Fury versus Usyk fight happening behind that performance this past weekend, it is a bit hard to imagine. Tyson Fury is a shameless character, and many people are just now finding that out, but he's always been that way. His convenient retirement after the first Vladimir Klitschko fight had nothing to do with mental health, and it had everything to do with him being investigated by the BBBOC and UCAD for testing positive for a banned substance. That's it. George continued, he'd rather just sail off into the sunset. He is an interesting character, and there are lots of avenues that he can explore after boxing, Doors that might be shut on him or not the same if he loses to Usyk. I think he's either going to rectify the last fight against Nganu, which he will get paid a lot of money for and a lot of people would be interested in. He will train better and show up and perform or he might retire. What kind of a spineless jellyfish uses something as serious as mental health and mental health issues to get out of a contractually obligated rematch? What kind of person does something like that? What kind of person lies about giving their entire purse to charity? Likely the same kind of person who would run around telling every interviewer that would put a mic in front of them that they don't care about money, they don't care about that stuff. Cause he's a fighting man. Same guy demanding the lion's share of the pot in an Usyk fight because of how big a superstar he is. But I thought you were a fighting man, not a businessman. I thought you were a fighting man who didn't care about money. Now you're saying all you care about is money. That's his justification for the Nganu fight, the amount of money that he stood to make. There is no way Fury didn't wake up the next morning after the Nganu fight with loads of doubts. Have I still got it anymore? Why could I not handle this guy comfortably, Grove said. He might be questioning, do I really want to do it anymore? The damage that Fury has done to the sport's reputation in front of those who probably don't follow it as closely as I or you, those casual observers and MMA fans. Have you seen what people are saying? Matt Brown, via the fighter versus the writer stated, the heavyweight division in boxing right now just sucks. These guys are not what we thought they were, and Francis Ngannou just exposed them. If he fights Anthony Joshua, he's gonna beat AJ's ass. If he fights Deontay Wilder, he's gonna beat Wilder's ass. He's going to go in and wreck the heavyweight division. That's what people are saying as a result of Tyson Fury looking the way that he looked with Ngannou. And the reason he looked the way that he looked with Ngannou is because He's not what people say he is. He's not what people think he is. And I've been telling you that for a long time. So between the hyperbole that some have attached to him and he himself not being a consummate professional, not respecting the sport, not respecting the paying public, not respecting that he is a champion. His position, a Terence Crawford, would never allow a novice to walk into his house and do something like that. A Canelo Alvarez, he wouldn't either, but Tyson Fury would, and it's because Tyson Fury is not cut from the same cloth as those fighters. He's an opportunist. 
a fraud. He's a fucking phony. And him being a fucking phony, that doesn't mean he's not a good boxer. A good boxer, yes, good. But he's not what you guys say he is. The greatest of this era, or the greatest of all time. You know, I was surprised how fight was going on. I, I didn't give uh, Francisco too much uh, expectation about this fight, but he was good. And he was, he was good and Tyson was so bad today, to be honest. And I wish him to have a good training camp before Usyk. Because if we see Tyson like this against Usyk, we all know what, what will be. Yeah. Usyk favorite now. I see big favorite for, that, for the fight. That's how bad Fury performed on Saturday. So much so that Bivol now favors Usyk. He favors him heavily to win the fight against Fury, if Fury even has the stones to take the fight. People outside of the world of boxing, they're looking at the sport and wonder if it's any kind of sport at all. It's supposed to command a level of respect because it's a difficult sport, a dangerous sport, where people die. It's not supposed to be that any Joe Blow can walk in off the street, guy from a different discipline walks into a boxing ring with a world champion, and the world champion's the one that gets sat on his back pocket. So then what does it mean to be a world champion in the sport of boxing? What does it mean? What is it worth? Not a lot to Tyson Fury, because as stated, he doesn't respect his position in the sport. He doesn't respect the sport itself or the people who pay to see it. That's why he lies to them so often, stringing them along. And some people, they actually go for it. They got a wake-up call this past Saturday. Do you know why Tyson Fury doesn't respect the sport or the customers? It's because he knows underneath it all, he's not as good as he says he is. He pulled a fast one on all of you. He scraped a win in a horrible fight to watch against Vladimir, ditched the rematch, comes back, fights one of the more limited champions, limited fighters the sport has ever seen three times over the course of five years. And for that, you bozos said he's the best of this era. You idiots crowned him the greatest of all times. He thinks you guys are stupid. Because he knows underneath it all, He's not that good. He's not the greatest of all time. He's just an opportunist like his father. Just like his daddy, who's always trying to siphon money from Tommy Fury's opponents. First it was Jake Paul, now it's KSI. That's another story. The Fury's a trailer trash. Nothing more than trailer trash. Tyson Fury himself, he's a joke. And in you guys believing in him so much, he's effectively made a joke of the sport. Made fools out of the lot of you. Is this your king?